This is uh, a video to help you guys set up a, a Zole zip quad. When you get the kit, it shows you what to do. Um, have a couple different designs. This is a 3D printed quadcopter that uh, I didn't design, but we print and sell. Uh, I'm going to be making some changes to that. It'll be an updated version of that soon. This is the uh, first Zole design with a center section. Looks like this. It's a minimal weight. This is probably the lightest 330 millimeter quadcopter out there. Extremely fast, extremely agile. Uses the clamp on motors, but we're going to move away from that because these motors don't do well in a crash and the shafts bend. So if you have a way around that, feel free to uh, order one of these. Or if you have a 3D printer, I've made these files available on Thingiverse for free. This is a pretty insane quadcopter. I have some videos up on that. Uh, this is the center section from that. Pretty cool. These are some of the motor pods from the one we're going to be installing today. If you buy one of those kits, you're going to get this stuff here. This is with the uh, this center section with these motor pods. This is printed in T glass, which is a PET plastic, uh, which is the same plastic they use on water bottles. Very strong, probably four times or more stronger than ABS plastic. This is ABS printed here. This is clear ABS, and probably seven, eight times stronger than PLA. So, but we're not going to be using one of those center sections today. <clears throat> This uh, here was an experiment printing in uh, polycarbonate. This is super strong. I mean, you just put this in a vise and it does not break. Very hard. So once I figure out that method of printing these out, very tough to do this without warping. Uh, warping is the death of me for a quadcopter because everything has to be straight and square. This is a nylon printed, also super strong pretty much got that method down but nylon is very slippery and it's very hard to clamp to carbon with nylon so for now we're just uh, using the PET plastic let's see these are both uh, PET I believe so anyway on to the quadcopter this was uh, I've designed a new center section to hold everything together and uh, what I've done is made these holes slightly smaller because carbon arrows come in different uh, diameters so I left a little room for you to play with and drill out get the appropriate drill bit See, this one's a little tight it won't go in there what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill that out and we're gonna cut our carbon arrows and the fun thing about this design is you can kind of tailor your arms to whatever you want you can buy one of these arrows for five, six bucks a piece, unless you want to buy really good ones, they're even more. Or you can just buy seven millimeter, seven millimeter um, carbon tube from anywhere, or seven and a half millimeter carbon tube from anywhere, if you can get a good price on that, and then just cut your, your, your arms down. So it works out to being about a dollar an arm, because I can get about five arms out of this arrow. So, when I get to have an arrow, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shave off the these things. We don't need that. And when you cut carbon, you want to have some kind of dust control, dust mask. Carbon is bad for you. I'm going to use a vacuum cleaner when I cut this. So, first thing I'm going to do is mark out my arms. And I'm cutting these at 130 millimeters. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark those. It doesn't have to be exact. You can set it later. 260. 390. 520. So as you can see, those are the forearms. I can get a bunch more.
So if you get a little splinter like that, best thing to do after your cuts anyway, is you're going to put a little drop of CA on there. And you're going to seal the end of the carbon so that it doesn't splinter. Okay, now you got your forearms, and as I said, you want to uh, seal the ends off. If you want to file these flush, you can, can. You can go ahead and file these flush. There's no need to, really. Uh, in the future, I'm probably going to be providing a source for the arms already pre-cut. I'll be cutting them on a wet saw. I think that may work out pretty well. If anybody else has any other ideas for cutting these things, feel free to let me know. This is uh, the inspiration for this design here. These carbon plates are available online. I may purchase a bunch and provide them in my store. And then you have these things that I designed that will be available in my store. But this is what the completed frame is going to look like. And this thing is a screamer. And these are the uh, RCX 1804 motors. These have been beat up already. I'm trying out a new one now. These are the new RCX motors. The uh, 1806s. A little beefier. The bearings are supposedly better. And have these little carbon props. Gonna give a try. Hopefully we'll have be able to make a flight video, but it's winter time, so it's kind of tough. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, put the standoffs in for our flight controller. Now these holes are going to be a little undersized as well. So what you're going to do with that, and that's because uh, you can either use 440 or 3 millimeter. You're just going to drill out to your uh, preference so I'm going to go ahead and drill all these holes out now these should go right in there like so you can order these from Hobby King I'll put some links in the description. That's a nice tight fit right there. Clear. It does. We're going to have to nip those off. You can also just double side tape your controller, your flight controller right on there. There's no need to use standoffs. Okay. So now this will take a standard flight controller right there like that. And this will get mounted over here like this if you want. Or wherever you want to put it. Now just use a nylon nut. It's going to have to be cut to size. Like that. That's a uh, CCD controller. Copter control. Open pilot. Uh haven't tried one of these yet for acrobatics should work fine I've been using the uh, Pro Flip or the Flip 32 from White Spy alright now we're going to 
set up our bolts. Now I'm using uh, aluminum hardware. This was special ordered here. I went with the aluminum to try and save weight. Although regular steel, 440, 3, 3 millimeter will work fine. And we, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and just drill out. You can go ahead and laugh at this drill, but this was my very first drill. This was from the 80s. The battery died in it, so I just hooked it into an A123 pack. Good stuff. So, so before that wasn't, uh, didn't fit. Now it should fit perfectly. May have to ream it out a little bit. We want that in there nice and tight. You can see where all this is going. Maybe put a drop of lube on there. We're going to have to drill these out as well. So let's go ahead and get our bolts started. All right, we got some aluminum 440 hardware here. You can use three millimeter, but the aluminum is uh, much more expensive in three millimeter, and there's practically no difference. I didn't ream those holes out any more than I needed to because I wanted it to be a good fit. So now we're going to go ahead and tighten these up a little bit. Just bring the nut down till it's snug because we're going to ream out these holes as well. And the uh, idea is we don't want to be overly clamped on the carbon because first of all you crush the carbon tube and that fractures it that's not good and we want a little bit of uh, freedom in the movement in the crash it'll give away a little bit The purpose of this design really is to have the uh, booms as the weaker point. So hopefully in a crash the booms will snap before the, the plastic will. They should break. You can get aluminum booms. They'll snap even easier. And then to change the uh, booms you're only going to loosen three screws. Slide the booms out and replace. Something you could do right at the field. So no more going home and fixing your quadcopter. When I find when you're doing a lot of acrobatics you're breaking stuff when you're pushing the limits. So this was meant for field repair. When I go out to fly I really want to go out and fly. I don't want to be having to go home and repair stuff. It's not that I crash a lot, but 
You do crash quite a bit. If you ain't crashing, you're not trying. I think the cool stuff about this uh, PET plastic is probably could put some LEDs in it and illuminate it. That would look pretty cool. Thinking about coming up with a kit for that as well. Alright, we have uh, somewhat of a center section there. Let's go ahead and tighten these up. Fifty grams so far. All right, next we're gonna do these. Yes, I printed this vice. You see these are pretty good fit on here because of the size drill bit I'm using. And I want them to be loose again in the crash. That'll give a little movement to everything so you don't snap stuff. All right. Okay, a screw in here and on here. I'm actually going to use a washer. So, there you have it, one completed quadcopter. All up weight, with the frame alone, 81 grams, very light. A completed quad with a four cell battery, 334, doesn't weigh anything. And if you like my designs, going to be uh, making an FPV version of this where it'll be more like an H quad and again these will be able to be turned forward if you want that 
racer option and uh, the next step up I'm going to make a 450 design with uh, either dual or triple booms again using uh, easy to find carbon arrows you can go to your sports shop and pick these up most of the times you're just going to break these instead of the frame I'm going to make these frames available all the time I've been selling them now for quite some time so I'll be here for the long run uh, probably going to make this design downloadable on Thingiverse as well so uh, <clears throat> should something happen you can still download the design and have someone else print it I'm also going to put this design on uh, Shapeways which will be a lot more expensive but a much more accurate um, build be made on a million dollar machine instead of a thousand dollar machine or whatever and there you have it that's how you put one of these together I hope you enjoyed washing and I hope you enjoy flying I think once you fly one of these you're gonna find just how stiff it is there's no flex in the arms when you do a flip it stops on a rail and I'm gonna put a little uh, demonstration at the end of this video to show you uh, some of the tricks that I was doing with it but I noticed that once I use this design over a design like this where see these arms no matter how good you tune your PIDs if this arm flexes at one Hertz well that's what your flight controller is going to react at useless good for it if you're just hovering around or whatever doing some FPV that's fine but if you want to get into serious acrobatics when you come out of a flip and those motors stop you want this thing to stop and there's there's like there's no practically no flex the amount of flex in this arm doesn't equal the power the thrust output of the motors so you're gonna have almost no flex and again when you go like this or this it's gonna stop dead in its tracks it's gonna fly like it's on rails uh, there was a lot of considerations designing this this has been in development for well over a year now and uh, I think I've designed something pretty good here and useful again a lot of the goals were easy to find components uh, hopefully again these would break before the plastic you can get the cheaper aluminum ones those will definitely break before the plastic uh, I'm sure after a dozen or so crashes you might need a, a plastic piece or you could just order two kits and have some spares again these can all be changed right on right on in the field so if I want to change this in the field I'm going to loosen these three bolts, this bolt, slide your pieces of your boom out, slide the ESC back onto the new boom, and slide it back into position. Leave yourself enough slack so that you can do that. I'm just using rubber bands here to hold the ESCs down because uh, this was made in nylon and nothing sticks to nylon, so I had to use uh, rubber bands. This is PET. A double-sided tape would work fine on there. And... Uh, See if there's anything else I left out here. There was a bunch of, there's a whole list of design considerations when I made this. So, a lot of thought went into this. Anyway, thanks for watching.